Welcome back, and today I'm going to make Halloween cookies, so let's get started. Okay, so my first ingredient is butter, and I need a cup and a half of butter. So each stick of butter is a half a cup, so I'm going to need three sticks. So a half and a half, that's one cup, and another half is another, it's a half a cup, so that's a cup and a half. So let's put the butter in here, and I have left it on the counter to soften. Hope everybody's having a good day. This is a fun time of year. It starts to cool off and I love to do baking. And I hope you do too. All right. All right, so there's our cup and a half of butter. Just kind of wipe that off the butter from my fingers. And now we need a cup and a half of white sugar. Now when measuring out sugar, you need to level it off. And I use the back of a um, butter knife, this part, and I just level it, off, level it off. So that's one. And then I have my half cup measure. And I do the same thing. And then we will set this aside. Oops. Set this aside. And then we need two eggs. I'm going to use my wrappers from the butter to put the shells on. So one, two, and I'm gonna go wash my hands. Okay, so time to add the vanilla. So we need a tablespoon of vanilla, pure vanilla extract. I'm just gonna measure this into the eggs. I always like to do my extracts into my eggs. And then we need two tablespoons of milk. And when I do, um, I could use that measuring spoon, but I like to use these little cups they have now, which are really great. And they have the tablespoons on here. So I'm going to just kind of get even. So I need two tablespoons, which is right over here. And I'm gonna have my gallon of milk here. and. I'm going to measure it and make sure that's level, and it is. So there's my two tablespoons of milk, and I'm using whole milk, and I'm just going to pour that in with my eggs and my vanilla extract, and then I'm going to take a fork and just kind of mix it up a little. Okay, and then I'm going to set that aside, and now it's time for the dry ingredients. Okay, so I need four cups of flour. I'm going to scoop it out, and I'm using, again, the back of the butter knife. And when you do flour, you also want to level it off. So we need four cups. One. Two, three, four. Okay, and then I'm going to just leave my flour out because I'm going to need it later when I roll out these cookies later. So, now the next ingredient is three teaspoons of baking powder. So I'm going to get out my teaspoon measure and my baking powder and make sure it's baking powder and not baking soda because that does make a difference. And I need three teaspoons. 
and I'm going to level this off as well and I'm going to use the lid. One, two, three. And I'm going to go ahead and do a dash of salt. And a dash of salt is just a little bit like that. And I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to also pre-mix it with my fork. And now we're going to go over all our ingredients to make sure we didn't forget anything. All right, so we have our butter and our sugar. So we have a cup and a half of butter and a cup and a half of sugar. We have two eggs. We have two tablespoons of vanilla. We have two tablespoons of milk, four cups of flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, and a dash of salt. So we'll go over to the mixer and get started mixing. Okay, so we're over here at the mixer, and I just want to mention it is actually one tablespoon of vanilla. I was previewing my video, and I noticed that I actually measured out one tablespoon of vanilla, but when we went through the ingredients, I accidentally mentioned I said the wrong thing. So it is one tablespoon of vanilla. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to go ahead and use a dough hook to do this cookie dough. You don't want to go ahead and use a wire whisk because you will break it. That is for light things like egg whites and sauces and things like that. And this one here is more like for cakes. So we need a dough hook. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna put the splash guard on, otherwise everything will go flying. And I'm gonna start slow and then increase the speed because that's the way you do it so that everything doesn't go flying out. We want to mix it up really well. All right. Okay, so let's check it. So I have this rubber spatula. It works really well to scrape the sides. So we're going to scrape the sides, make sure nothing's sticking. So we're creaming together the butter and the sugar. And let's just go a tad longer. It's really close. But let's just go a little bit longer. So now it is time to add our liquid ingredients, and I'm going to add half of it, and then I'm going to add some flour. So we have our mixture with the eggs, add a little bit of liquid, get this mixed up. rest of my liquid.
Okay, I'm going to pause this to go ahead and scrape the sides with my rubber spatula. Okay, scraping the sides here. Mix it some more. Let's check this out. I think it might be done. Okay, nothing's sticking and it seems to be mixed up very well. So we're done mixing. Let's take it over to the other part of the counter. Okay, so we are we are gonna take the dough out of the mixing bowl and we're gonna wrap it up in plastic wrap. So I need to take my rubber spatula and I need to scrape the dough off the beater. That aside. So we're going to chill this in the fridge for a little while until it gets a little bit harder. It'll be easier to work with for the dough. And I'm going to wrap it up in plastic wrap. So maybe about an hour, maybe a little less. I'm going to, while I'm doing this, while I'm letting it cool down and get a little harder, I'm going to clean the kitchen. And then we will roll this out. And make cookies. Okay, so I'm taking and I'm scraping it. You're going to do a lot of baking. A rubber spatula is a great idea because you can really clean this bowl out. Okay. I'm just going to kind of Shape this into this aside. Shape this into a ball. Maybe I should have gotten a bigger piece of plastic wrap out. Okay. Probably need another one. Okay, I got another piece of plastic wrap. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, put it into a nice ball. This one, put it into a nice ball. It'll be easier to manage on the cutting board later. I'm just going to wrap this up. Wrap this one up. And I'll put it in the fridge. And wait about an hour. And then we'll start rolling out the cookies. All right, so we are ready to roll out the dough and I have preheated the oven to 375, so that's going. So if you hear a beep, that's what that is. And um, we're going to take, I have a wooden cutting board and we're gonna take some flour and we're just gonna move it around here. And then we're gonna take, get flour on our rolling pin. Okay. Oh, and then I put flour. There's a cookie cutter, and I, we're going to dip the cookie cutter in flour as we go along as needed. So we're going to take a handful of this dough. Probably could have almost had three little containers of the dough. Okay, so we're going to roll this out. You might have to reapply the dough. I mean, reapply the flour, excuse me, not reapply the, because we're going to probably have to, so it doesn't stick. Okay. So we want to make these, kind of make, maybe like a quarter of an inch thick or so. 
these are going to be large cookies so we're not actually making a ton of cookies but if you want a lot of cookies then you could certainly do a double batch of course we put a lot of baking powder in it so i think they're going to poof up all right so you also want to have your cookie sheet handy kind of set some stuff up here all right so I'm gonna take this pumpkin cookie cutter so many we can get out of here let me just wiggle it back and forth and I'm gonna put this that doesn't stick. Okay, I'm gonna put that on the cookie sheet and I'll show you how far I have it Try to get as many of these out. There, that one didn't stick. So I got the right amount of flour right there. And let's put some more flour down. Use the cookie cutter to scrape that off. Do a couple more. And then I'll end up doing the rest. Okay. is a nice easy dough to work with and as I said these cookies are going to be large so I'll probably have to keep on because that see that's not going to fit so I'm going to have to keep on putting it back together and rolling it out so I'm going to keep on going and then um, I will show you how many I end up with all right so I have exactly 16 cookies these are large ones okay and the reason I'm going with such a large one is to get the face of these pumpkins on here. So I have some classic candy corn, which are like this. Whoops. <laughs> like this. And then, and I got them fresh because you want to use fresh ones. And then I got some ones that have the little brown. So like that. Okay, so. We are going to start with eyes, and I'm going to turn this around I'm in just a second. So I got one here, and then one here. So I got each eye. If you have a better way of doing this, that you want to have it look a certain way, that's fine too. This is how I'm going to do my face. And then I'm going to take my little brown ones to do the mouth. And I'm just pushing these in just a little so they don't fall out. And they probably will melt a little, and that's okay. It's just going to add to the flavor. So I'm going to turn this around so everybody can see. And there's my face. I'm going to do another one. Push that in there. Make sure he's in there good. And now I'm going to take the ones with the brown for my little mouth. And then I'm going to take some of them, set that aside, and I'm going to continue to decorate those. On a couple of them, I'm going to just add some sprinkles for those people that don't care for the candy corn. And I just happen to have some corn sprinkles. sprinkles out that's that takes longer let me go see if I have some green for the stem okay so I'm gonna put a little bit of the green for the stem ever so slightly it just kind of gives you an idea of a couple different ways to do it okay so I'm gonna continue to go ahead and decorate these cookies and I'll be back shortly okay so we got the sprinkled ones, and then we got our candy corn ones right here. Let's see if everybody can see that. 
All right, so I'm going to put it in the oven at 375. It'll probably take about 10 minutes, but let's check it at five. So let's just take a little peek. Okay, they are definitely not done. They are cooking nicely, and we'll check on them soon. They're smelling very close. I'm going to take the bottom ones, though, and put them on the top, and the top ones on the bottom. And that way, they get evenly cooked. And my 10-minute timer's up, but I'm going to go a little bit longer because they don't look quite done yet. So we'll check back in just a few. All right, so I pulled these from the oven, and as you can see, the candies melt it, which we were anticipating. It smells so delicious in the house. I'm just gonna show you these. I'm gonna let these cool down, and then we'll put them on the cooling rack. We did have one that um, kind of oozed out, but the rest are all looking really good, and it smells so delicious in here. All right, so I'm going to just let those cool down, put them on the cooling rack. I'll show you me uh, taking them off the cookie sheets for sure, and then we'll do the taste test with them, which I am anxious to do because it smells so good in here. Okay, so I have a very large spatula, and these are very large cookies, and we're just going to put them on the cooling rack. Make sure you get all the way under them. Now I want to mention that these did take 15 minutes. I also want to mention these cookies are very large. So you definitely want to, um, for sure it's going to be 10 minutes for sure, but to keep a close eye on it because depending the size of your cookie cutter and the, depending on your oven itself, it might vary. So I'm going to continue to put these onto a cooling rack and when they're cool enough to taste test, um, my favorite part of the video, we will do the taste test. Okay. I'm gonna do the taste test very shortly. It smells so good in here. Alrighty, so I'm gonna do kind of a close up of one of the cookies. All right. And I'm gonna end up taste testing that one that oozed off to the side. Anyway, this cookie right now is really warm, but I love to have warm cookies. So I'm going to go ahead and taste test this one. And I'm going to look at that. All right. Mmm. That is so good. All the flavors of the cookie itself with the candy corn melting into it. Absolutely delicious. Mmm. So, so good. I'm just, look at them. Very moist, light, fluffy. Buttery. Gotta use real butter for sure. Mmm. So, so good. Um, we made... 16 cookies. If you want to double the recipe because you know they're going to go fast, that's great. But these are huge cookies. So eating one's kind of like eating two. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making this video and I will enjoy eating these cookies and sharing them with my family. Have a great day. For those of you who subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. And if you don't, I hope that you do. I have a whole bunch of fun videos. Thanks for watching.